The, the first research that we did um, a few weeks ago was actually to investigate a um, media outlet, a website based in Brussels that was called EP Today, like European Parliament Today. And this uh, fake media outlet was not actually in a European Parliament magazine that it was claiming it was, but actually was serving as a platform for MPs, for um, some civil society to actually push a very pro-Indian agenda. And when we looked at the servers, the IPs, and all the digital traces of these websites, that's how we were able to find a combination, an ecosystem of more than 265 uh, fake media outlets, but also fake NGOs and W think tanks um, acting all over the world that were actually promoting um, Indian interests. And could you trace them all back to one source? So the only source that we can find back, which is a common source, is a um, um, consortium, a group based in India called the Srivastava Group. It's a consortium of very different companies that goes from airplanes to uh, medical healthcare to uh, mining and coal mining in Canada and, and media in India. And actually there is one media called the New Daily Times, which is look like exactly like EP Today or the Times of Geneva that we've seen in our investigation, but actually um, focusing on for Indian uh, stakeholders. And they were actually using the same kind of structure, same kind of content in all of these websites. And that's how we were able to trace it back to the Srivastava group. A lot of the websites had anti-Pakistan um, sort of misinformation or disinformation. Who are they targeting and why? So the, the content is actually not only about uh, misinformation or disinformation about Pakistan. What is very interesting is that they, they were doing two things. First, they were copy-pasting content for um, existing source of information, which might be uh, Russia Today, might be Voice of America, might be the North Korean press agency. Uh, so that's the first time to actually give the appearance of a legitimate media outlet because it's reporting on many news from different sources. But what they did is, is they had a network of organization and media covering specifically demonstrations organized by think tanks and NGOs run by the Srivastava group. And when they had these demonstrations, whether in Brussels or whether in Geneva in front of the United Nations headquarters, then at that time, they were actually only promoting one side vision of the Pakistan and Indian conflict, and it was always the Indian vision of the conflict. And these demonstrations, these press conferences, they were all um, displayed on all the different fake media outlets at the exact same time to actually give an impression of an international coverage of this one-sided vision of the conflict. And so were they hoping to influence European uh, lawmakers or who were they trying to influence and to what end? We, th we think they've been trying to influence uh, decision makers in Europe and the United Nations. You have some press conferences that have been held um, in the um, United Nations headquarters in Geneva. You had demonstrations there and you had a European member of parliament actually participating to these demonstrations, giving interviews to these fake media outlets. So the question now is like, did they know that they were actually uh, being um, interviewed by, and, and sometimes trips paid by this Srivastava group, but did they have knowledge of uh, what is the Srivastava group? The second question that is here is, we also see uh, many European um, uh, designated representatives from the governments uh, that are actually organizing these trips, these events, in coordination with the Srivastava group. So the other question is like, who inside Brussels or Geneva has actually uh, helped to organize this ecosystem of disinformation and influence for Indian stakeholders? Yes, which is, it becomes quite suspicious. Is there any evidence that's linked to India's government itself? No, absolutely not. Uh, the question is still open, and I know that many uh, researchers are still trying to, to, to look at this. Uh, there is some alignment with um, Indian position for a long time, but there is absolutely no trace of linking this to any government. Yeah, it's fascinating, and it just goes to show how kind of easily, easily deceived people can be with these kinds of websites.
It's, it's actually very easy. We live in a time where actually setting up an information operation like this takes you very, very uh, few money and very, very few time. So it's actually very um, effective in terms of time spent and costs. The thing is, uh, they've also been uh, playing all the, all the playbook of, of influence with having fake think tanks, fake NGOs, and it's, it's very easy um, in, the, in a period when we have a lot of information around that we don't have the time to look where the information comes from. And actually, uh, with information available online, there, there are possibilities to trace back the information and to trace back on who's actually managing something. I think that's something we should be um, very much doing when we report on, on news, international news, especially.